Hey, Shalom family. Hey, this is our room. Uh, today, dealing with uh, the virgin birth. I want to get right into this. Get right into it. Um, Ringo, in his video, stated that um, uh, no dual prophecy. Well, if you think about it, as old as the scriptures are, um, it applies. We're the same people. Be the same people all throughout this book. Uh, everything that happened to us happened to us again and again and again, making the same mistakes over and over. And uh, the thing is that um, um, Solomon said, um, "There's nothing new under the sun. What has been is what will be." And <laughs> that means the same things over and over and over again. Uh, that also goes into why Yah, Scripture says Yah doesn't change, because he deal, deal be dealing with the same thing over and over, just different people, and the things that happen to us in, in other captivities. That's why those very same scriptures apply to us in this captivity, except this is the last one. Um, that didn't make sense to me, that he would um, say that there's no dual prophecies when. Just about all the prophecies, except the ones that haven't been fulfilled, are dual prophecies. They were happening to Israel then, and it fits us now. We're going to see that. But I want to start with uh, 2 Samuel uh, 7.12 through 7.16. And we're going to see how this prophecy itself is a dual prophecy. He used this, but he didn't, he didn't understand that uh, this prophecy itself is a dual prophecy. I'm going to show you. Um, uh, 2 Samuel 7 and 12. And when the days, when your days be fulfilled, and you shall sleep with your fathers, I will set up your seed after you, which shall, shall proceed out of your bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever establish him forever. I will be his father and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. But my mercy shall not depart away from him as I took it from Shaul, whom I put away before you. And your house and your kingdom shall be established forever before you. Your throne shall be established forever. So David's throne was established. David's throne was established. That's why we say the house of David. And why we say uh, that um, the Messiah would sit on the throne of David. Because his throne is established. It's set. It's set from his time until now. His throne is set. Because he did all that Yah commanded him to do. Okay. Let's go down and see uh, uh, see if uh, Solomon's kingdom was established. Uh, let's go to First Kings one twenty eight through one thirty. First Kings one twenty eight through one thirty. And King David answered and said, "Call me Bathsheba." And she came into the king's presence and stood before the king. And the king swore and said, "As Yah lives, that has redeemed my soul out of all distress." Uh, verse 30, even as I swear unto you by Yah, power of Israel, saying, Assuredly, Solomon your son shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne in my stead, even so will I certain do, certainly do this day. So David set him up before he even died. But the prophecy was that uh, his throne would be established after, after uh, the death of uh, uh, David. King Dawi. Uh, let's go to 1 Kings 1 and 39. And Zadok, the priest, took a horn of oil out of the tabernacle and anointed Solomon, and they blew the trumpet, and all the people said, Yah save King Solomon. Uh, 1 Kings 1 and 46. And also, Solomon sits on the throne of the kingdom. David Dawi was still alive. 1 Kings 2 and 10. So David slept with his fathers and was buried in the city of David. 
1 Kings 2 and 11. And the days that Dawid reigned over Israel were 40 years. Seven years reigned he at Hebron, and, 30, and three years reigned he in Jerusalem. Then sat Solomon upon the throne of David his father, and his kingdom was established greatly. 1 Kings 6 and 1. And it came to pass in the 480th year after the children of Israel were come out of the land of Egypt, in the fourth year of Solomon's reign over Israel, in the month of Ziph, which is the second month, that he began to build the house of Yah. So he, he uh, sat on the throne, he sat on the throne of his father, and uh, he built the house of Yah. I don't think anybody will argue with that. And that fits, that does fit into the prophecy of uh, 2 Samuel 7, 12 through 16. But it doesn't say one thing that uh, the gathering of Christ was teaching. I heard them say uh, that um, this, the lineage had to come through Solomon. It doesn't say that. The scripture don't, don't say that, that uh, uh, the Messiah had to come through the lineage of Solomon. I didn't read that anywhere. Um, that was... Uh, an opinion unless they can come with the scriptures because I don't see that um, the Messiah had to come through Solomon I didn't read that so if somebody got a scripture saying that then you know bring it forth and if that's so then let it be so but I see scriptures that say exactly the opposite of that but we gonna see um, and we also see the Messiah's kingdom so this prophecy uh, 2nd Samuel not only fits Solomon, but it also fits the Messiah. Um, Isaiah 9 and 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty Power, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Uh, verse 7. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of Yah of hosts will perform this. Okay, so we see that um, he's going to sit up on the throne of, of uh, David just like, just like Solomon did and upon his kingdom uh, to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice henceforth even forever. Now Solomon's throne wasn't uh, established forever. That's why we say um, the throne of David and not the throne of David and Solomon. Because Solomon's throne was not established. But we're going to see that too. Okay. Um, where do we see the house of the Messiah being built? Uh, Ezekiel 40 through 48. Ezekiel 40 through 40 out, 48, Ezekiel 40 through 48, we see the house of the Messiah. Um, and you should read that for yourself. And you see, that's, uh, that's what it's going to be like when he's ruling. That's what it's going to be like when the Messiah is ruling. That's who that's dealing with right there. Um, and he said unto me, Son of Man, uh, this is Ezekiel 43, verse 7. He said unto me, Son of Man, the place of my throne and the place of the soles of my feet where I will dwell in the midst of the children of Israel forever. My set apart name shall the house of Israel no more defile, neither they nor their kings by their whoredom nor by the carcasses of their kings in their high places. So we defile the name of the Messiah, the Messiah that was dealing with us all along. The Messiah that was dealing with us all along. And we called him Yah. He always existed. It's Yah the Father, it's Yah the Son. And the Son was the one that was dealing with us. That's why he said, No man has seen the Father or heard the Father's voice. That's why scriptures say that. Because it was him we was dealing with. He's made exactly in the image of Yah. Messiah, is he of the lineage of Solomon? Messiah of the lineage of Solomon. We're going to have to look at that. Because um, it's being taught that the Messiah had to come through the lineage of Solomon. 
Uh, we're going to start at 1 Kings 9, 4 through 9, 9. 1 Kings 9, 4 through 9, 9. And if you will walk before me as David your father walked in integrity of heart and in uprightness to do according to all that I have commanded you and will keep my statutes and my judgments, then I will establish the throne of your kingdom upon Israel forever. As I promised to David your father, saying, There shall not fail you a man upon the throne of Israel. Okay, look at that. He says, Keep the laws, statutes, and commandments, the judgments, then I will establish the throne of your kingdom upon Israel forever. See that? Then I will establish your throne upon the kingdom of Israel forever. As I promised to David your father, saying, There shall not fail a man upon the throne of Israel. Verse 6, but if you shall at all turn from following me, you or your children, you or your children, and I will not, and will not keep my commandments and my statutes which I have set before you, but go and serve other gods and worship them, then will I cut off Israel out of the land, hmm, like we out of the land, which I have given them, and this house which I have Set apart for my name, will I, will I cast out of my sight, and Israel shall be a proverb and a byword among all people. Negro, nigger, colored, black, African American, proverb and a byword. And at this house, which is high, everyone that pass by it shall be astonished and shall hiss. And they shall say, Why has Yah done thus unto, un, unto this land and to his house? Uh, and they shall answer, because they forsook God their power, who brought forth their fathers out of the land of Egypt, and have taken hold upon other powers, and have worshipped them, and served them. Therefore has Yah brought upon them all this evil. Well, Solomon did not establish his throne. That's why we say throne of David, not throne of Solomon and David. His throne was not established. First Chronicles 28, 6 and 7. And he said unto me, Solomon, your son, he shall build my house and my courts, for I have chosen him to be my son, and I will be his father. Moreover, I will establish his kingdom forever, if he be constant to do my commandments and my judgment as at this day. First Kings 11, 7 through 11, 11. First Kings 11, 7 through 11, 11. And did Solomon build a high place for Chemos, the abomination of Moab, in the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon? And likewise did he for all his strange wives, which burnt incense and sacrificed unto their gods. And Yah was angry with Solomon, because his heart was turned from Yah, power of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice. And had commanded him concerning this thing that he should not go after other powers, but he kept not that which Yah commanded. Wherefore Yah said unto Solomon, For as much as this is done of, of you, and you have not kept my covenant, my statutes which I have commanded you, I will surely rend or rip the kingdom from you, and will give it to your servant. His kingdom was not established. That's why Yah is ripping it from Solomon, because his throne was not established. Because he strayed and worshipped other powers. So why was why would why would Yah the Father send his son through somebody that didn't establish their throne, and not only didn't establish their throne, but failed to establish their throne by worshiping Molech? That means he was sacrificing kids into the fire because that's a requirement of Molech. That you sacrifice your children by fire. So if he was worshiping Molech, he was throwing kids in the fire. I don't think y'all would uh, uh, establish his throne for that. But we know that the Messiah's throne will be established forever. It will be established forever. So this prophecy, 2 Samuel 7, 12 through 16 fits both the Messiah and it fits Solomon. It's a dual prophecy. That's a dual prophecy.
2 Samuel 7, 12. And when your days be fulfilled and you shall sleep with your fathers, I will set up your seed after you, which shall proceed out of your bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. 1 Kings 2 and 12, then sat Solomon upon the throne of David his father, and his kingdom was established greatly. Okay, Solomon's kingdom was established. To read, to read about the Messiah's house and kingdom uh, being established, um, read Ezekiel uh, 40 through 48. 2 Samuel 7 and 13, he shall build a house for my name. 1 Kings 6 and 1, and it came to pass in the 480th year after the children of Israel were come out of the land of Egypt, in the fourth year of Solomon reigned over Israel in the month of Ziph, which is the second month that he began to build the house of Yah. Ezekiel 43 and 10, you son of man, show the house to the house of Israel that they may be ashamed of their iniquities and let them measure the pattern. Both the Messiah and Solomon will build the house. Second Samuel 7 and 13, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. We know the Messiah's kingdom will be established forever. Isaiah 9 and 7, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of Yah of hosts will perform this. Solomon's kingdom was not established. 1 Kings 11:11. 11, 11. Wherefore Yah said unto Solomon, For as much as this is done of you, and you have not kept my covenant and my statutes which I have commanded you, I will surely rend the kingdom from you and will give it to your servant. 2 Samuel 7 and 14. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. First Chronicles 28 and 6. And he said unto me, Solomon, your son, he shall build my house and my courts, for I have chosen him to be my son, and I will be his father. It also fits the Messiah. Psalms 2 and 7. I will declare the decree, Yah hath said unto me, You are my son, this day I have begotten you. Hebrews 1 and 5. For unto which of the angels said he at any time you are my son this day have i begotten you and again i will be to him a father and he shall be to me a son second samuel 7 and 14 if he commit iniquity i will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men isaiah 53 and 5 but he was wounded for our transgression he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed Second Samuel 7:15. But my mercy shall not depart away from him, as I took it from Shaul, whom I put away before you. Shaul's throne was ripped away from his lineage and his heritage. First Kings 11:11. 11, 11, Wherefore Yah said unto Solomon, For as much as this is done of you, and you have not kept my covenant, my statutes which I have commanded you, I will surely rend the kingdom from you, and will give it to your servant. First Kings 11 and 12. Notwithstanding. In your days I will not do it, for David your father's sake, but I will rend it out of the hand of your son. 11.13 Howbeit I will not rend away all the kingdom, but will give one tribe to your son, for David my servant's sake, and for Jerusalem's sake, which I have chosen. Uh, 2 Samuel 7.16 And your house and your kingdom shall be established forever before you. Your throne shall be established forever. Speaking of David. As you can see, this is a dual prophecy. 2 Samuel 7, 12 through 16 does fit Solomon as well as the Messiah, but I do not see where the Messiah had to come through the lineage of Solomon. He set up his seed after him, which shall proceed out of David's bowels. Not Solomon's bowels, David's bowels. And that's where a lot of confusion is coming in. They took something simple with this lesson and made it difficult and complicated when it's not because the whole the whole issue is David's throne David's seed seed of David not the seed of David and Solomon because Solomon didn't establish his throne the seed of David that's what we're dealing with and they made they making this complicated read a few things about seed and a few definitions and we'll look at it and watch how simple it is. God's word is simple. Everything he tells us is simple because we're hard headed. He don't give us nothing difficult. He give it to us very simple so ain't no excuses. 
seed. Genesis 3 and 13 through 3 and 15. And, and Yah, power, said unto the woman, What is it that you have done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. He's talking to Eve. And Yah, power, said unto the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed above all cattle and above. Every beast of the field upon your belly shall you go, and the dust you shall eat all the days of your life. Verse 15. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed, talking to the serpent, and her seed. It shall, it shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. So the woman got seed. So the woman has seed. Sperm is what they would uh, point out to you. But we're going to keep reading. Hmm? Keep going. Okay. Genesis 4 and 25. And Adam knew his wife again, and she bare a son, and called his name Seth. For Yah said, For Yah said, She has appointed me another seed instead of Abel when we came slew. Okay, Leviticus 22 and 4. What man soever of the seed of Aaron is a leper or has a running issue, he shall not eat of the set apart thing until he be clean. And whoso touches anything that is unclean by the dead or man whose seed goes from him. Okay, what man soever of the seed of Aaron? Hebrews 22:33. Seed, figuratively fruit, plant, sowing, time, prosperity, carnally child, fruit, seed, seed time, or uh, sowing time. So, the definition that would fit what man soever of the seed of Aharon would be posterity, posterity, child, descendant, descendant. Don't let people confuse you with synonyms and uh, definitions. It's posterity, child, posterity or child. That's why Genesis 3.15 says, between, <laughs> uh, between thee and the woman and between your seed and her seed. Posterity, descendant, child, descendant, not sperm, not sperm. But as we look at Leviticus 22, 4, 22 and 4, we see that um, a man whose seed goes, goes from him is the same Hebrew word, uh, Hebrew 22, 33, but we know that that seed is seed, is sperm, because it's going forth from them, but it's the same Hebrew definition, so they have to pick, when they're translating, they have to pick the word that best fits the context of what's being said. Seed go forth from him, that's why you have, uh, uh, Hebrews 7902 attached to Hebrews 22:33, which is lying down of do or for the sexual act so this is how we know that it's talking about uh, sperm see you either use descendant or you can use sperm depending on the context of what's being said look at this a lot of the Greek words you got to realize in the Greek that's a different language, and they don't have all the words that Hebrew have. So, you know, sometimes, just like in divorce and putting away, it's one word that means uh, both. It means divorce and it means putting away. So, according to the context of what's being said, that's how you choose the word that fits best in that scripture. So, you have to choose either divorce or putting away, because it's only one word in the Greek for the Hebrew term uh, divorce, where it's two in Hebrew, it's two words in Hebrew um, for um, putting away, and see, and that's that's the difference in the Greek and the Hebrew uh, one of the differences anyway 
well, let's look at the definition of sperma, uh, which was Greek 4690. It says something sown that is seed, including the male sperm, by implication, offspring. Also means descendant. Also means descendant. But they wanted you to focus on sperm, but it also means offspring or descendant. Uh, specifically a remnant figuratively as if kept over for planting issue or seed sperm or offspring sperm or offspring that they wanted you to focus on on us uh, seed see they, they looking at it the wrong way they're looking at everything as sexual everything ain't sexual you know you can't you can't look at it like that can't look like everything is on the physical. We're dealing with the most high. A lot of these things are um, spiritual. Okay. Let's let's read. Let's read what they say. And then I'll give them. Let's read the scriptures that they use pertaining to seed. Because they want you to think that it has to come through a man. Error. 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 Okay. Romans 1 and 3. Concerning his son, Yehoshua HaMashiach, our master, which was made of the seed of David, according to the flesh, made of David's seed, not Solomon's, not Joseph. The key is he has to be made of David's seed, a descendant of David. 2 Timothy 2 and 8. Remember that Yehoshua, Messiah of the seed of David, was raised from the dead, according to my gospel seed of David. David's sperm. David's sperm. Revelation 22 and 16. I, Yehoshua, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. He is the root and the offspring. Offspring. Descended. Seed. Understand? 2 Timothy 2 and 8. Remember that Yahushua, Messiah of the seed of David, was raised from the dead according to my gospel. Seed of David. Sperm of David. Descendant of David. Everybody that descended, descends from David is of his seed. Everybody. This is not hard to understand. Very simple. Acts 2 and 30. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that Yah has sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins. Whose loins? David's loins. Don't let him confuse you. We're talking about David's seed. David's loins. Sperm from David. That's what we're talking about. Swore to him with the oath of the fruit of his loins according to the flesh. David's fleshly seed. He would raise up Messiah to sit on his throne. Romans 1 and 3. Concerning his son, Yehoshua Messiah, our master, which was made of the seed of David, according to the flesh. Seed of David. Sperm of David from David's loins. Loins. From David's body, he's a descendant. See how simple that is? Okay. For I could wish that myself were cursed from Messiah for my brethren and my kinsmen, According to the flesh. Kinsmen according to the flesh. According to the flesh. Those that are born of the same descendants as me, Israel. We all descend from Israel. We're all of the seed of Abraham. Y'all put the curses on us as a sign and a wonder. He told Abraham his seed will be strangers in the land. His seed is your wife of the seed of Abraham. Of course she is. She's of the seed of Abraham. She's a, that's only saying she's a descendant of Abraham. And here she is in a strange land, just like the man. See that? It fits man and it fits woman. And we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna look at that too. Uh, 1 John 4 and 3. And every spirit that confess not that Yahushua Messiah is come in the flesh is not of, is not of Yah. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. Whereof you have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Aharon came in the flesh. Ringo came in the flesh. Rakah 
came in the flesh. Like, well, yeah. Yeah, they all came in the flesh. What do you mean they came in the flesh? How else they gonna come? See? See that? That's why this scripture is important. Because he was a spirit before he was flesh. Why would it be important to say somebody came in the flesh? And when we all come in the flesh. We all uh, only come in the world one way. It's important that we know he came in the flesh because he was a spirit. It wouldn't make sense for us to just say he came in the flesh. What, what, what's the importance in that, that he came in the flesh if he wasn't something else to begin with? Wouldn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. He was a spirit. And he was the one dealing with us and uh, gave us the law, statutes, and commandments. He's the one that we married to, not Yah the Father. This is my example. Okay. I have a son. Is he my seed? Of course he's my seed. He's my descendant. I have a daughter. Is she my seed? Of course she is. She's my descendant. Now, with that in mind, play along with me. I'm King David. I'm King David. And along my lineage, the Messiah is going to come forth. Okay? So, I have a daughter. She's of my seed. She has a daughter. Is she of my seed? Of course she is. She's my granddaughter. She wouldn't be here if it wasn't for me. She's my granddaughter. She's my seed. Is her daughter my seed? Of course she is. She has one daughter. And, uh, and so on down the line. Let's say ten generations go by. All women. One ch all my whole lineage is one woman. One woman. One woman. One woman. Down ten generations. And then a son is born. Is he my seed? Of course he's my seed. He's my descendant. He's from my sperm. He wouldn't be here if it wasn't for me. See? Don't get caught up in. He got to come from a man. No, it doesn't have to come from a man. Because no matter... Who my, my daughter marries, she'll still be my seed. And her child will still be my seed. And their child will be my seed. Because that would be my granddaughter, my great-granddaughter, my great-great-granddaughter, my great-great-great-great-granddaughter. All the way down the line until the male is born that's supposed to inherit my throne. And is he, is he uh, 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 rightfully, can he rightfully inherit my throne? Yes, yes, but with stipulations, stipulations on that that y'all gave. He can inherit my throne. Lineage through lineage through lineage through lineage through lineage. He's my descendant and he can be heir to the throne. And even though um, the lineage does go, does go to the man, let's read what y'all said. Let's read what y'all said. He explained it more better than I, I ever could. Okay, we're going to go to the law of inheritance because what we are talking about, inheritance of David's throne. The Messiah inheriting David's throne. Let's look at that. If, if he's a, Numbers 27, 1 through 11. Then came the daughters of Zelopahad, the son of Heper, the son of Gilead, the son of Machir, the son of Manasseh, of the families of Manasseh, the son of Joseph. And these are the names of his daughters. Mala, Noah, Hagla, Milcah, and Terzah. And they stood before Moshe and before Eleazar the priest and before the princes and all the congregation by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, saying, Our father died in the wilderness, and he was not in the company of them that gathered themselves together against Yah in the company of Korah, but died in his own sin, and had no sons. Why should the name of our father be done away from among his family? Because he has no son. Give unto us therefore a possession among the brethren of our father. And Moshe brought their cause before Yah. And Yah spake unto Moshe, saying, The daughters of Zelopahad speak right. You shall surely give them possession of an inheritance among their father's brethren, and you shall cause the inheritance of their father to pass unto them. The 
inheritance of their father to pass unto them. And you shall speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a man die and have no son, then you shall call his inheritance to pass unto his daughter. Then his inheritance can go to his daughter if he have no son. If he only have a daughter, the inheritance can can pass to his daughter. Okay. And if he have no daughter, then you shall give his inheritance unto his brethren. And if he has no brethren, then you shall give the inheritance unto his father's brethren. And if his father have no brethren, then you shall give his inheritance unto his kinsmen that is next to him of his family, and he shall possess it. And he shall be unto the children of Israel a statute of judgment, as Yah commanded Moshe. Okay, so Yah, Yah said that the inheritance can go to a daughter. Can go to a daughter if there's no son. If there's no son, it can go to a daughter. And Yah said unto Moshe, Get you up into this mount, Abram, and see the land which I have given unto the children of Israel. And when you have seen it, you also shall be gathered unto your people, as Aharon your brother was gathered. For you, you rebelled against my commandments in the desert of Zen, and the strife of the congregation to sanctify me at the at the water before the eyes, before their eyes. That is the water of Meribah in Kadesh in the wilderness of Zen. And Moshe spake unto Yah, saying, Let Yah, the power of the spirits of all flesh, set a man over the congregation, which may go out before them, and which may go in before them, and which may lead them out, and which may bring them in, that the congregation of Yah be not as sheep which have no shepherd. Okay, let's go down to uh, John 10, 1 uh, through 10, 5. 10, 1 through 10, 5. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that enters not by the door into the sheepfold, but climb up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that enters in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. And to him the porter opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leadeth them out. And when he put forth his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice, and a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. Matthew 9 and 36, But when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion on them, because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd, someone to lead them. Someone to lead them. That fits the Messiah. That fits the Messiah too. Because we're going to see here uh, Numbers 27, 18 picking up. And Yah said unto Moshe, Take thee Joshua or Yehoshua. They both had the same name. Uh, Yehoshua son of Nun. And the Messiah had the same name. Yehoshua the son of Nun. A man in whom is the spirit. And lay your hand upon him. And set him before Eleazar the priest and before all the congregation, and give him a charge in their sight. And you shall put some of your own honor upon him, that all the congregation of the children of Israel may be obedient. And he shall stand before Eleazar the priest, who shall ask counsel for him after the judgment of Urim. Before Yah, at his word shall they go out, and at his word shall they come in, both he and all the children of Israel with him. Even all the congregation. So it was all given to Yahushua, son of Nun, just like it was given to uh, Yahushua, the Messiah. And uh, Moshe did as Yah commanded him and took Yahushua and set him before Eleazar the priest and before all the congregation. And he laid his hands upon him and gave him a charge as Yah commanded by the hand of Moshe. Okay. So everything was given over to him. Yahushua, which is symbolic of everything being given over to the Messiah as head of Israel. Okay, Numbers 36 and 2, and they said, Yah commanded my master to give the land for an inheritance by lot to the children of Israel. And my master was commanded by Yah to give the inheritance of his Zlopahad unto our brother, unto his Zlopahad, uh, give the inheritance of Zlopahad, our brother, unto his daughters. Verse 3. And if they be married to any 
of the sons of the other tribes of the children of Israel, then shall their inheritance be taken from the inheritance of our fathers, and shall be put to the inheritance of the tribe whereunto they are received. So it shall be taken from the lot of our inheritance. And when the jubilee of the children of Israel shall be, then shall their inheritance be put unto the inheritance of the tribe whereunto they are received. So shall their inheritance be taken away from the inheritance of the tribe of our fathers. Okay, so it's stipulations being put on the inheritance of the daughters. And Moshe commanded the children of Israel going to the word of Yah, saying, The tribe of the sons of Joseph has said well. According to the word of Yah, saying, The tribe of the sons of Joseph has said well. It was right in what they were saying. Picking up at uh, Numbers 36 and 6. This is the thing which Yah does command concerning the daughters of Zelopahad, saying, Let them marry to whom they think best. Only to the family of the tribe of their father shall they marry. Let them marry to who they think best. Only to the family of the tribe of their father shall they marry. And this is just for inheritance. This is just about inheritance. This is what we're talking about. Inheriting something. If you don't have nothing to inherit, it don't matter who you marry within the nation of Israel. It don't matter who you marry in the nation of Israel if you don't have an inheritance. It only matters if you have an inheritance. Numbers 36 and 7. So shall not the inheritance of the children of Israel remove from tribe to tribe. For every one of the children of Israel shall keep himself to the inheritance of the tribes of his fathers. Stay with your tribe if you have an inheritance. See that? So, so shall not the inheritance of the children of Israel remove from tribe to tribe. For every one of the children of Israel shall keep himself to the inheritance of the tribe of his fathers. And every daughter that possess an inheritance in any tribe of the children of Israel shall be wife unto one of the family of the tribe of her father, that the children of Israel may enjoy every man the inheritance of his father. See that? Every daughter that possess an inheritance in any tribe of the children of Israel shall be wife unto one of the family of the tribe of her father, that the children of Israel may enjoy every man the inheritance of his father. He repeating itself. Neither shall the inheritance be moved from one tribe to another. See how he repeats itself over and over, so it's clear. But every one of the tribes of the children of Israel shall keep himself to his own inheritance. Same thing again. Even as Yah commanded Mo Moshe, so did the daughters of Zelopadad. For Mala, Terza, Hogla, Milka, Noah, the daughters of, of Zelopahad, were married unto their fathers, brothers, sons. And they were married into families of the sons of Manasseh, the sons of Joseph, and their inheritance remained in the tribe of the family of their father. These are the commandments and the judgments which Yah commanded by the hand of Moshe unto the children of Israel in the plains of Moab by the Jordan near Jericho. They had to marry of their own tribe and they married their father's brothers, sons. Okay, now let me ask this question again. I'm King David. My only child is, is a daughter. Her only child is a daughter. Her only child is a daughter. All the way down to my great grandchild times ten. Then my grandson, my grandson is born. Is he of my seed? Yes, he's of my seed. He's of my sperm, which makes him my descendant. Is he able to inherit the throne? Yes, he's, a, he's able to inherit my throne. Why? Because the law... Uh, the law of inheritance says that uh, the woman has to remain within her tribe, within the family of her father, to inherit the throne. Because she's an heir to the throne, because my daughter's an heir to the throne, and her daughter's an heir to the throne, and her daughter all the way down to my great-granddaughter times ten, to my grandson, they have to remain married 
in the tribe of Judah. And not only in the tribe of Judah do they have to remain, but they have to marry within our family. Meaning they would have to marry uh, uh, within the family of our kin. This is what made uh, Mary able, uh, an heir to the throne, when the Messiah was able to inherit the throne through her. He was placed in the womb of Mary. Mary was a descendant of David, and the Messiah could inherit the throne through her because of Joseph. Because she married Joseph, that made her, um, the Messiah able to um, inherit David's throne through her. Because uh, not only did she have to marry from the tribe of her fathers, she had to marry from her father's family. And her and Joseph were cousins because he was from the lineage of Solomon and she was from the lineage of Nathan, which made them distant cousins. So that fulfilled the whole law concerning inheritance. And the Messiah legally inherited, inherited the throne of David through Mary, marrying her cousin Joseph, fulfilling the law of inheritance. Hallelujah. Now let's keep moving on. Elizabeth, the daughters of Aaron. Let's look at that. That's important too. And it was funny um, when I came to this. Um, when I looked at that, uh, I um, referred a book to me. He referred a book to me um, uh, for something he wanted me to see. And I read what he wanted me to see, and I never read no more of the book. You know, I just looked at what he gave me, because I got a lot of books, and, you know, when I'm studying, I'm, that's what I'm focused on. If I pause, it can't be for long. You know, my mind just uh, uh, works differently, I think, than other people's, in my opinion. Um, it was funny. I was sitting, I was talking to my wife, and I was like, I was like, well, the only way Mary could, after reading uh, Numbers, I was like, the only way Mary could receive the um, inheritance would be if she was an only child. And I said that, and I picked up this book and went right to the page um, that said that Mary was, um, she was only child. Her mother was barren. And Ringo pointed out the book, actually, and I'm going to say this, this is, this is how I view things, that these people have hid so much from us, y'all only dealt with our people. Our books, our libraries is probably, will fill a library, you know. So when somebody tells me, you know, what's valid and what's not, I'll read for myself. And I'll, and I'll go to y'all about what's valid and what's not. You know, I don't, I don't listen to men and I question men that even tell me something like that. You know, I, I'm not scared of no book. I'm not scared of no words on a page. You know what I'm saying? So uh, you just, you read it and you ask Yah, just like you do the scriptures. You run across something, if you don't understand it, you ask him. If you're seeking him, he's going to answer you. Because he answers me. He answers me. And when I picked that book up, it said Mary's mother was, was uh, barren and she was the only child. It was the only child. And when I read that book and I read the different translations uh, uh, the different manuscripts of that story, man, a uh, thing or two raised the eyebrow. Some, uh, some of the manuscripts raised both eyebrows, you know. But um, that particular story, it sat well with me, and you know, that's my opinion. That's my opinion, and you know, read it for yourself. Read it for yourself. Read it for yourself. It's always good to read it for yourself and act y'all about it, you know. And don't let what another man say. If he don't think it's true, that's on him, you know. That's, it's okay. You don't have to believe, you know. You believe whatever you want to believe. And that's, that's a good thing about um, uh, the Messiah coming, you know. Be free from men because they're the ones that was misleading us the whole while, you know. And we can go directly through the Father, through the Son, and He's our example. He's our teacher. And we don't need to listen to men. You don't even need to listen to me. You know? 
that's why I try to keep my opinions out and state when it is an opinion and that y'all's words speak. But anyway, um, Luke 1 and 5 through 1 and 6. Uh, there was in the day of Herod, the king of Judea, uh, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abia, and his wife was of the daughters of Aharon, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before Yah, were walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, of Yah, blameless. Walking in all the um, ordinances of Yah, doing everything Yah said, so they were blameless. Uh, and that's when Ringo posted the Pro, Protevangelium of James. That's the name of it. I'll post it. I can't say it. Um, Father uh, Joachim and mother uh, was Anna. Um, one manuscript says that one manuscript says Anna and Emernia were sisters. Of Emernia was born Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist. I found that interesting. That was interesting to me, and that said, that said uh, a whole lot, and that fit right back into the law that we just read in um, Numbers, because if Anna and Emernia were sisters, and Emernia was um, the mother of Elizabeth, Elizabeth can be of the daughters of Aharon, because her mother married one of the sons of Aharon. Because her mother married the sons of Aaron. That would have made the daughter one of the daughters of Aaron. That would have made Elizabeth um, of the daughters of Aaron. Even though Emernia was originally of the house of David. You understand? That's just, that's just saying. Uh, Elizabeth, I mean Anna... Um, Mary's mother and Emernia are sisters. They're both of the house of David. If Emernia married a son of Aaron, Elizabeth being the daughter would be of the house of Aaron. She would be of the house of Aaron. You know, and hey, scripture don't say that. And, you know, all of these manuscripts, hey, heck yeah about it. I care about it, you know, but that would explain why she would be of the house of our own and um, um, Mary being of the house of David because that was originally her lineage. They both was originally of the lineage of David. Okay, I just wanted to uh, put that in there. law of uh, marriage because um, even though uh, we had traditions which you know um, Ringo was pointing out you know they had to have a ceremony they had to have the uh, coming together uh, to have the um, the token of virginity um, that's important that was that was uh, that's part of the law the token of uh, virginity but let's, let, let's just uh, look at the law. Because it says that uh, Joseph was a righteous man. And if he's doing something other than the law, or maneuvering, scheming around, trying to get around the law, then he ain't righteous. How you gonna scheme around Yah's law? That will make him unrighteous, right? Okay. If any man take a wife and go in unto her and hate her, and give occasion of speech against her, and bring up an evil name upon her, and say, I took this woman, and when I came, when I came to her, I found her not a maid. Okay. Then shall the father of the damsel and the mother take and bring forth the token of the damsel's virginity unto the elders of the city in the gate. And the damsel's father shall say to the elders, I gave my daughter unto this man to wife, and he hates her. And lo, he give an occasion of speech against her, saying, I found not your daughter a maid. And yet these are the tokens of my daughter's virginity, and they shall spread the cloth before the elders of the city. The only one that could say that Mary or the woman wasn't a virgin 
is the man. It's her husband. He's the only one that can bring that accusation. He the only one uh, that the token of virginity is proof of. It's proof against him from bringing a bad name against a, a daughter of Israel. It's proof against him. So if Joseph is a righteous man and he had sex with his wife um, before they actually had the ceremony and, you know, um, went in and slept and brought out the token of virginity. If he slept with her um, before, which patience is really one of the fruits of the Spirit, uh, if he couldn't wait, if he wasn't patient, then he wasn't showing the fruits of the Spirit. And maybe he wasn't so righteous. And if he uh, went in unto her before the ceremony, he knew he needed a token of virginity. Wherever they laid, he could have brought the sheet to her father, couldn't he? Wouldn't that be the righteous thing to do if he slept with her? To pick up the sheet, fold it up, and take it to her father and said, We eloped. You know, we became one um, in another land or wherever. Here's the token of virginity. Because he's the only one the token of virginity can be used again. So if there was no token of um, virginity, and he, um, uh, uh, being a righteous, being a righteous man, if he slept with her, he wouldn't have to worry about no token of virginity because he slept with her. So why would he lie on her and say, no, she's not a virgin? That don't make sense. If he a righteous man, he's not going to say she wasn't a virgin and he knows she was. So what would he need a token of virginity for? And why didn't he sleep with her and give, be honest and give the token of virginity to the father? Both of them can agree. We, we, we slept together. Just the token of virginity. Both of them out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, right? So what would he be scheming about? Why would he be wanting to put her away if he slept with her? That don't make sense. If he's a righteous man, according to the law, it was a way around that. Honesty. Honesty. And the elders of the city shall take that man and chastise him. And they shall immerse him in a hundred shekels of silver and give them unto the father of the damsel because he has brought an evil name upon the virgin of Israel and he sh and she shall be his wife. He can he may not put her away all his days. Because that was wicked. To say she wasn't a virgin when he knew she was and the father had the token of virginity. That was wicked. Okay. Deuteronomy 22 20. But if this thing be true, and the token of the virginity be not found for the damsel, um, that's 21, then they shall bring out the damsel to the door of her father's house, and the men of her city shall stone her with stones that she died, because she had wrought folly in Israel to play the whore in her father's house. So shall you put evil away from among you. Okay, so if he was telling the truth, and she wasn't a virgin, Meaning she was sleeping with somebody else because our women wasn't wasn't um, whores. They wasn't sleeping with everybody. They were virgins. The maids were virgins because they wasn't sleeping with everybody like we doing now. We got to get out that Babylonian mindset. You know, a lot of things that were said in that video was like he wasn't like that. He was righteous. You know, well, <laughs> I guess depending on the on the time that uh, you looked at us. But um, these were the laws. These were the laws. If, if you took a wife and she wasn't a virgin, and you know she didn't bleed, then and the man wanted to bring an accusation against her because he didn't have to. He only he knew, you know, him and her. So you know, if if he brought the accusation, then the remedy was death. The remedy was death. But Mary was a virgin. So why would he do that? Why would he sleep with her? And and um, know she a virgin, and then be thinking, yeah, I'm gonna put her, I'm gonna put her away privily, so they don't stone her, you know, because I'm righteous. No, that sounds like a wicked, wicked Babylonian mindset. I'm gonna sleep with her, and then I'm, I'm gonna put her away privily. That ain't righteous. How, how is that righteous? That's not righteous. If he slept with her, he knew she was a virgin. Got to get out. Get out that wicked mindset. Deuteronomy 22, 22. If a man be found lying with a woman, married to a husband, then they shall both of them die, both the man 
that lay with the woman and the woman, so shall you put away evil from Israel, Cain. That's why um, um, the Messiah didn't uh, have them, told them uh, he who is without sin cast the first stone when they brought the woman that was caught in adultery, but they only brought the woman that was supposed to bring the woman and the man, but it was probably one of them that was sleeping with them right there in the crowd, and they just brought her and said, what should we do with her? But both of them had to be brought. So that was righteous judgment. Not the stone, because they both wasn't brought. You just you could have snatched her up from anywhere and said, Yeah, she we called her an adult. Well, who? Where the where the man at? Okay. If a, okay. Uh, Deuteronomy twenty two, twenty three. If a damsel that is a virgin be betrothed unto a husband, and a man find her in the city and lay with her. God says, if a damsel that is a virgin be betrothed to a husband, she a virgin, but she's promised to a man that Yah calls her husband. Yah calls the man her husband, and they only betroth. And a man find her in the city and lay with her. Then you shall bring them both unto the gate of the city, and you shall stone them with stones that they die. The damsel, because she cried not, being in the city, and the man, because he has humbled his neighbor's wife. See that? Mary wasn't his wife, wasn't called his wife in the scriptures because he slept with her, but because that's what the law said. That's what y'all say. Y'all say they husband and wife just on the, just being betrothed. Just being betrothed, they husband and wife. And if another man sleep with her, put him to death. That's how serious it is. And that's just a covenant. That's a covenant. The covenant makes you marry. The breaking of the hymen, the blood seals the covenant. Just like Moshe, we marry Yah, and he sprinkled the blood on us. The blood sealed the covenant. That was the symbolism of breaking of the hymen. Get it? It's real simple. Deuteronomy 22, 25. But if a man find a betrothed damsel in the field, and the man force her and lie with her, and the man only that lay with her shall die. So he is a betrothed damsel, somebody's wife. Um, but unto the damsel you shall do nothing. There is in the damsel no sin worthy of death. For as when a man rises against his neighbor and slayeth him, even so is this matter. If a man find a damsel, that is a virgin, which is not betrothed, and lay hold on her, and lie with her, and they be found, then the man that lay with her shall give unto the damsel's father fifty shekels of silver, and she shall be his wife. Because he hath humbled her, he may not put her away all his days. If the damsel is a virgin, but she ain't betrothed, pay the father and she become your wife. Because you humbled her. But you telling me, Joseph, want to put her away secretly. You want to put her away secretly because he slept with her. Why don't you just get her, when the righteous thing according to the law, just be given a father 50 shekels? Or, since they was betrothed, just take the token of virginity. I don't know. Seems like according to the law, that's what would have been righteous. Seems what y'all trying to say he did was wicked. Seems wicked. Seems like he's scheming. Yeah. Yeah, that was straight. But I'm going to move on. You know, that's Babylonian mindset, man. That's wicked. That's wicked. Okay. Okay. Gringo bought up uh, Toby. The book of Toby and the Apocrypha. I'm going to show you what he missed. That's why it's important to always study for yourself. Don't look at what somebody said. Look at this. You know, that's a magic trick. Watch my hands. You know, or like that dance they used to do. Watch my feet. You know, then they move their feet real fast. You know, it's like, no. Go back and read the whole story. Read the whole story. Or at least read the chapter. Make sure what he's telling you is in context. Make sure it's in context. Toby. 8 and 19... Through 8 and 21. Uh, and he kept the wedding feast 14 days. This is one of the scriptures that Gringo pointed out. For behold, the days of marriage were finished. Raguel has said unto him by an oath, 
that he should not depart till the fourteen days of the marriage were expired. And then he should take the half of his goods and go, go in safety to his father and should have the rest when I and my wife be dead. Tobit 11 and 19 said, And Tobit's wedding was kept seven days with great joy. Okay, that was a celebration that um, these ox keep bringing up. Tobit 6 and 13 through 14. Uh, the young the young man answered the angel, I heard, brother Azarius, that this maid has been given to seven men who all died in the marriage chamber. And now I am the only son of my father. I am afraid, lest I go in unto her. I die as the others before, for a wicked spirit loves her, which hurt, hurts nobody but those who come unto her. For, wherefore I also fear, lest I die, and bring my father's and my mother's life because of me to the grave with sorrow, for they have no other son to bury them. Okay, so it's a, it's a wicked spirit in there killing everybody that try to go in and lay with her. But it says that um, she was given to seven men. She was married to seven men who all died in the marriage chamber. Because that she has, had been married to seven husbands whom Almodius, the evil spirit, had killed before they had lain with her. Hmm. She was married to seven husbands whom Almodius the evil spirit had killed before they had lain with her. Dost thou know, said they, that thou hast strangled your husband? And you hast already seven husbands, neither was thou named after any of them. So she was married, but she never slept with her. She was their wife, they was her husband which is correct according to the law but they never slept together seven of them seven of them before they had lain with her she had seven husbands okay <laughs> that goes with uh, Tobit 6 and 13 when the young man asked the angel I have heard brother Zarius that this maid has been given to seven men them all died in the marriage chamber. Given to seven men. Promised to seven men. Covenant. Covenant. That's why they were married. Okay. Yeah. Let me read uh, Tobit 6 and 17. And the devil shall smell, smell it and flee away and never come again anymore um, because he burnt uh, a gallbladder or something. It just uh, made the devil flee off. But when you shall come to her, rise up both of you and pray to Yah which is merciful, who will have pity on you and save you. Fear not, for she is appointed unto you from the beginning. She was she was chosen. She was chosen for him from the beginning. So those other men, even though they was married to it, they never sealed it because he was she was she was for um this op. Uh I forgot his name. Da, 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 da. Okay, anyway. And thou shalt uh, preserve her and she shall go with you. Moreover, I suppose that she shall bear you children. Now when Tobias had heard these things, he loved her and his heart was effectually joined to her. Then he called his daughter Sarah and she came to her father and he took her by the hand and gave her to be wife to Tobias saying, Behold, take her after the law of Moshe her after the law of Moshe and lead her away to your father and he blessed them and called Edna his wife and took paper and did write an instrument of covenants and sealed it see that he did that with the mother seven do did the same thing with them that's what made them marry they married according to the law the betrothal betrothal is marriage why is that hard to understand? They say that clearly. Wife, husband, you slept with another man's wife. It's the promise that makes them marry. It's just, if they didn't have sex, it's just not sealed in blood yet. It's just not uh, signed, sealed, and finalized, I guess, you know, another way to say it. 
sex that's finalized. Who wants to marry everybody they had sex with? Most of, most of us probably regret laying with a lot of the people we laid with. Let alone talking about we married to them. And if sex equals marriage, then what's fornication? What's fornication? And, and if sex equals marriage, then the man that broke in your wife, if your wife wasn't a virgin when you met her, the man that broke her in, that's her husband. And you two are committing adultery. If sex equals marriage, he broke her in. She was a virgin, so she belongs to him. And now you committing adultery. And we know you can't see the kingdom if you're committing adultery, right? You know that, right? Okay. Okay, so that don't make sense. Because you're a sinner. And you can't pray your way out of adultery if you're in adultery. The best thing you could do is send her back to her husband. Wouldn't that, be, wouldn't that be right? Wouldn't that be right? If sex equals marriage? Tobias ate and one. And when they had supped, when they ate, they brought Tobias into her. That's when they took him to the marriage chamber. They took Tobias, after they had ate and drank and all that, then they brought Tobias into her. Let's read uh, Genesis 24, verse uh, 67. And Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent and took Rebekah, and she became his wife. And he loved her. And, and, uh, Isaac was comforted, comforted after his mother's mother's death. Now, I'd like to, you know, use that scripture to say, see, he took her in the tent, and she became his wife, and he loved her, you know, and that comforted him from his mother's death. Okay. Let's back up. Genesis 47. And I asked her and said, whose daughter are you? And she said, the daughter of Bethuel, Nahor's son, whom Milcah bare unto him. And I put the earring upon her face, and the bracelets upon her hand. Let's skip down to uh, Genesis twenty-four fifty and read the whole read the whole chapter. Read the whole chapter. Genesis twenty-four fifty. Then Laban and Beth Bethuel answered and said, The thing proceeded from Yah. We cannot speak unto you bad bad um, or good. Behold, Rebecca is before you. Take her. Take her. And go. And let her be your master's son's wife as Yah has spoken. They're agreeing to give her over. It's agreement being made here. Take her. If this from Yah, hey, take her. Take her. And go and let her marry your master's son. If this is of Yah. We support that. Behold, Rebecca is before you. Take her and go. And let her be your master's son's wife, as Yah has spoken. And it came to pass that when Abram's servant heard their words, he worshipped Yah, bowing himself to the earth. And the servant brought forth the jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment and gave them to Rebecca. He gave also to her brother and to her mother precious things. And they did eat and drink, and he and the men that were with him and tarried all night, and they rose up in the morning, and he said, Send me away unto my master. Look at that. They agreed to give their daughter and send her on the way with him to his master to marry. Let me, let me pick up again at um, Genesis 24:55. And her brother and her mother said, Let the damsel abide with us a few days, and the least, at, the, at the least ten, after that she shall go. And he said unto them, Hinder me not, seeing Yah has uh, prospered my way. Send me away that I might go unto my master. And they said, We will call the damsel and inquire at her mouth. And they called Rebecca and said, and said unto her, Would you go with the, Will you go with this man? And she said, I will go. And they sent away Rebecca, their sister, and her nurse, and Abram's servant, and his men. And they blessed Rebecca and said unto her, you are our sister, be thou the mother of thousands of millions, and let, let your seed possess the gate of those who hate them. And Rebekah rose and her damsels, and they rode upon the camels that followed the man, and the servant took Rebekah and went, went his way. And look at that. They blessed her. 
they gave her and they blessed her. He came and asked for the hand of their daughter for, for um, his master, and they agreed to it. That was a covenant. Do you think somebody could have came? You think he could have had Rebecca follow him out and then slept with Rebecca and not been guilty of death? Of course he would have. Of course he would have been guilty of death because she was promised to um, Isaac. She was promised to Isaac. And once she was promised, that was his wife. She was his wife before, he, before she even got there. Before she even got there. According to the law. That's why the gifts were given. That's why they gave him, that's why he was giving them gifts and stuff. Dowry, you know. Payment of, of uh, payment for the bride. Okay. I found something interesting. Um... Ezekiel 16.6 through 16.9 And when I passed by you and saw you polluted in your own blood, I said unto you when, your, when you were in your own blood, live. Yea, I said unto you when you was in, in your blood, live. I have caused you to multiply as the bud of the field, and you have increased and waxed and great. And you, will, you have come to an excellent, um, to excellent ornaments. Your breasts are fashioned. Your hairs are is grown. Whereas you was naked and bare. Verse 8. Now when I pass by you and look upon you, behold, your time was the time of love. And I spread my skirt over you and covered your nakedness. Yea, I swear unto you and entered into a covenant with you, says Yah, the power, and you became mine. I swear unto you and entered into a covenant with you, says Yah. And you became mine. Then washed I you with water. I thoroughly washed away the blood from you. And I anointed you with oil. Hmm. We was polluted in our own blood. This ain't sexual hymen blood. Get it? It's the same thing. Same covenant he made with us. It's the same covenant we make with each other. It's all symbolism. It's all symbolism. And let's, let's go um, back to uh, Exodus 19 and 8. 19 and 8. And all the people answered together and said, All that Yah has spoken we will do. And Moses returned the word of the people unto Yah. And then Yah, uh, uh, Yah said, you know, don't let them sleep with their wives. Clean them up. I'll be back in three days. That was an engagement. They said, yes, we'll marry you. Yes, everything you said, yes, we will do everything that you said. He said, okay, clean them up, don't let them have sex, I'll be back in three days. When he came back in three days, Exodus 24 and 3 through 24 and 8. And Moshe came and told the people all the words of Yah and all the judgments, and all the people answered with one voice and said, all the words which Yah has said will we do. And Moshe wrote all the words of Yah, and rose up early in the morning and built an altar under the hill and twelve pillars according to the twelve tribes of Israel. And sent young men of the children of Israel with offer burnt offerings and sacrifice peace offering of oxen unto Yah. And Moshe took half the blood and put it in basins and half the blood he sprinkled on the altar. And he took the book of the covenant and read it in the audience of the people. And they said all that Yah had said we would do and be obedient. I do. I do. Do you take this? Do you take this man to be your lawfully wedded husband? All that he said, we would do. And Moshe took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, "Behold, the blood of the covenant." You get it? The blood of the covenant. Breaking of the hymen. Sexual union. The becoming one. Moshe, verse 20, Exodus 24 and 8, and Moshe took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, Behold the blood of the covenant, sealing the marriage. Be not confused about being in the covenant, are we? I ain't confused. Right here, I want to touch on Isaiah 7, 14, uh, but I'm not going to deal with it right here. I'm going to come back to it. But I just wanted to read it. I just wanted to point something out concerning it um, before I go on. Um, Isaiah 7 and 14.